Good evening, my name is Tamina Mohammed, and I am the former Youth Poet Laureate for the City of Edmonton. Welcome to the 2021 Alberta Literary Awards presentation. The Writers Guild of Alberta is proud to celebrate the achievements of Alberta writers over the past year. And we're honored to showcase the 30 finalists in 10 categories that represent some of the very best that our community has to offer. Juries read over 250 submissions this year. And whether you publish for the first time or the 100th time, or are still working on that manuscript, you did so during a period of great disruption, distraction, and uncertainty. We hope that you enjoyed this video presentation and thank you for supporting writing and writers in Alberta. The Alberta Literary Awards were created by the Writers Guild of Alberta in 1982 to recognize excellence in writing by Alberta authors. In this award season, the WGA office received more than 250 submissions. From those submissions, jurors have selected awards recipients in five book categories, children's literature, picture book, fiction, nonfiction, drama, poetry, and three shorter writing categories, short nonfiction, short story, unpublished essay. This year's finalists represent writers of diverse cultural backgrounds, career paths, experiences, and ages. The Writers Guild of Alberta acknowledges that we are located on treaty territory and respects the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. Before we present the awards, we must extend our sincere appreciation to the following sponsors and donors who have provided support for this awards program. Our gala and award sponsors and donors are Alberta Views, the Alexandra Writers Center Society, Stefan V. Benedictson, Vivian Hansen, Marilyn and Bob Stallworthy, Under the Arch Youth Foundation at the Calgary Foundation. As well, the following organizations provide ongoing funding to the Writers Guild, and we are grateful to them. Canada Council for the Arts, the City of Calgary, the City of Edmonton, the Edmonton Arts Council, Calgary Arts Development, Alberta Foundation for the Arts, Alberta Culture. We also extend a special thank you to this year's jury panels. They read a lot of material and made the tough decisions. Most categories had over 30 entries, so thanks very much to them. Our first Writers Guild of Alberta Literary Award was named in honor of children's author Ronald Ross Annette. R. Ross Annette lived in Alberta and worked as a teacher during the 1920s. He published over 70 stories in the Saturday Evening Post between 1938 and 1970. This award was established in 1982 and is presented annually for excellence in writing by Alberta Writers for Children. The award is sponsored by the Under the Arch Youth Foundation at the Calgary Foundation. This award alternates between picture books and chapter books, and this year we have three exceptional picture books. The finalists and jury comments are... Allison Hughes, The Silence Slips In, Orca Books. Beautifully illustrated and lyrically written, this is the ideal book for a shy or anxious child who sometimes finds the world overwhelming. It's also the perfect moment of stillness for a busy child who needs to pause and breathe. Hughes's text acknowledges that even a happy occasion, a birthday party, for example, can be full of chatter and shrieks. And sometimes we all need the silence to slip in. Opening this book feels like stepping into a warm and welcome pause, a chance to breathe and believe and be. Natalie Meisner. My Mommy, My Mama, My Brother, and Me, Nimbus Publishing. The jurors found this book to be lyrical as well as poetic, moving in and out like the waves, up and down like the dunes. Just as the ocean has a rhythm, the words in this book flow as if rocking with the sea. The author weaves a story about a family, their unique setting, and simple discoveries that enrich their everyday lives. This book is an ode to family, friends, and discovering by the sea. Kim Smith, Box Attacks, HarperCollins. Box Attacks is a delightful read 
that will fully charm and engage its audience. It demonstrates multiple ways of expressing creativity and shows what teamwork can achieve, all while delivering full entertainment. Children sorry to see the story end will be enchanted to discover detailed back matter, including an experiment and instructions on how to design and build unique cardboard structures. This book is full of energy. Congratulations to Alison Hughes for her winning book, The Silence Slips In. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for this honor. I want to thank the Writers Guild for the honor. And I was just delighted to be nominated with Natalie and Kim, who wrote such beautiful books. I want to thank my editor, Liz Kemp, and the whole pod at Orca Book Publishers. Um, they've done a wonderful job. Ninon Pelletier, the illustrator, who we sent off with the impossible task of drawing silence, darkness, noise, and she did such a stunning job. So thank you, Ninon. Also, thank you very much to my writer friends, you know who you are, and my family, Mitchell, Kate, Ben, Sam. There is no one I would rather be locked up with. Thank you, everyone. Our next award presentation is the James H. Gray Award for Short Nonfiction. This award is presented for an outstanding literary short nonfiction piece written by an Alberta author and published in a magazine, newspaper, or anthology. This award was established in honor of Dr. James H. Gray, who wrote more than a dozen books that profiled Western Canadian experiences and history. James H. Gray was inducted into the Alberta Order of Excellence in 1987 and the Order of Canada in 1988. The award is supported by Marilyn and Bob Stallworthy. This year, our finalists and jury comments are Tim Bowling, The Floating Library, Queen's Quarterly. While firmly rooted in the specific, transporting the reader wholly into the narrator's memory of the 1970s, of Western Canada, of his father's fishing career, of a fishing boat's small deck, of his family's box of worn books turned away by the secondhand shop, this well-drawn piece also reaches the universal and moves the reader to think and to feel. The last line, a knee buckler, leaves the reader to consider the passage of time and feel the weight of the decades of life lived and lost. This is an expertly crafted, meaningful piece of creative nonfiction and demonstrates all the strengths of the genre. Omar Moalam, January 8th, 2020, Edify Magazine. This piece of expertly crafted literary journalism demonstrates the power of storytelling. In this text, the author was able to take a tragic public event and bring it into the intensely personal. In doing so, the work demonstrates the scope of the crisis in a way that a reported event, even one that dominates the news cycle for a time, falls short. The piece is seamless in craft, so well constructed that the reader is able to grasp complex historical context while remaining in scene and feeling the gaping loss of life that occurred on January 8, 2020. Debbie Waldman, The Boys of Summer, Tablet Magazine. This opening section of The Boys of Summer, a complete hook, sets up the text and sets the piece in motion. The spare scene work is so well drawn and placed that it is lasting and demonstrates the author's skillful ability to balance showing and telling. This is a piece about baseball, about connections forged through time and place, about tragic loss, and about coming to know someone even after they're gone. Congratulations to Tim Bowling for his winning story, The Floating Library. The Howard O'Hagan Award for Short Story was established in honor of accomplished short story writer Howard O'Hagan. Known as a mountain guide and wilderness explorer as well as a writer, O'Hagan authored two novels and two collections of short stories. This award is sponsored by the Alexandra Writers Center Society. This year's three finalists and jury comments are Gabe Calderon, Anne Wani Kajigan, Arsenal Pulp Press. 
This is a fresh and ambitious fusion of a familiar post-apocalyptic scenario with the storytelling traditions of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Moan and Mi'kmaq Ilnu peoples. The self-referential power of stories, the way Anwani Kajigan invites the reader into its new mythology, and the ultimate triumph of self-definition over colonial narratives, combined with vivid images, a poignant backstory, and an urgent dilemma to create a sophisticated and satisfying piece of speculative fiction. This story offers a different, better answer to that terrifying question. Where are we headed? Lee Caverne, Players, Grain Magazine. Players is a clever and stylish study of a teenager's oscillating loyalty between her mother, her father, and her preferred brand of cigarettes. A witty, irresistible narrative voice carries the reader through an evening of petty family dramatics. Vulnerable, engaging, and funny, the distinct voice and style makes this complicated and intimate story about family relationships shine. Stephanie Tamagi, Fur Hat, Exile. A sad and beautiful story of kindness and resilience in the face of trauma and abuse skillfully rendered through its evocative images and understated voice. Woven with the invisible threads of metaphorical and resonant silences, Fur Hat will reward the reader who is attuned to its subtle nuances. Congratulations to Lee Kvern for her winning story, Players. Hi everyone, if you're viewing this video, it means that I've miraculously snagged the Howard O'Hagan Award for short story. I'm thrilled. I'd like to thank my fellow nominees, Gabe and Stephanie. I'd like to thank the Alexander Writer Center for sponsoring and supporting short story writers everywhere, on the list or not. I'd also like to thank the Writers Guild of Alberta. Where would we be without you? The Writers Guild's Award for Poetry was established in honor of Stephen G. Stephenson, who immigrated to Alberta in 1889. Stephenson was considered the voice of the Icelandic immigrant community, and his poetry expressed the loneliness felt by many living in the new country. This award is sponsored by Stephen V. Benedictson. The 2021 finalists and jury comments are Bertrand Bickerstaff, The Response of Weeds, New West Press. The response of Weeds calls and responds to the power of the word. This exceptional collection probes place, race, and history through the manipulation of language. These formidable poems, each expressed in a powerful voice, use jazz and biography to destabilize the presumed history of a Western province through its geographical features and flora. Cat Cameron, Go Still Linger, University of Alberta Press. Richly and deftly executed, Ghost Still Linger peels back the shiny exterior of the Alberta Advantage. Alberta to its core, this immersive and moving collection exhumes the Old West with wit and intelligence, deftly articulating its feminist history. Strong voices guide the reader over borders of place and time, from tragedy to truth-telling, of a settler past that continues to inform the present. Amy LeBlanc, I Know Something You Don't Know, Gordon Hill Press. In her debut collection, I Know Something You Don't Know, Amy LeBlanc blurs the lines between poetry, narrative, and incantation. Exigent and rhythmic, her language reforms contemporary seeing as, traditional European fairy tales, and urban legends. Eloquent and replete, these poems straddle the intellectual and corporeal, mythological and literary. I Know Something You Don't Know is a wholly unique and transformative read. Congratulations to Bertrand Bickersteth for his winning book, The Response of Weeds. That's my surprised face. Uh, why? Because uh, actually I'm recording this in advance and it's weird, uh, but also because I am sincerely shocked to find out about this. Um, thank you so much. Thank you to the judges. Um, thank you sincerely to my publisher who's always supported me very well. Uh, it's amazing to think that um, poems that you spend time in the solitude and privacy of your own uh, mind 
one day can go out into the world and have an impact like this. I encourage all of you who want to write and who never dreamt that you could fill this space to write, to go out there and fill that space. It can be yours too. Thank you sincerely for this honor. Our next award is the John White Memorial Essay Award. This award is presented to an Alberta author for a short, unpublished piece of nonfiction. John White was a respected writer, historian, and supporter of the arts in Alberta. He was the curator of Banff Heritage Homes, a foundation agency of the White Museum of the Canadian Rockies in Banff. A poet, columnist, writer, and filmmaker, John wrote several books and contributed to many anthologies, magazines, and other media. This category, the John White Memorial Essay Award, offers a prize for unpublished work. We believe that this supports both emerging writers and established writers who have ventured into new territory or taken on a new writing challenge. This award also employs a blind judging process. While the jurors are deliberating over the essays, they do not know the writer's identities. This year, our three finalists and jury comments are Jannie Edwards, Meditations on Tenderness in a Time of Plague. An incisive and intimate meditation on tenderness, exploring the human condition at its most finite and vulnerable level. Exquisitely crafted with poetic prose, arresting imagery, and a commanding execution of form, this essay managed to universalize the personal with musings that varied from violent and stark to fragile and, of course, tender. Peter Midgley, Bird. Comical, poignant, and quick-witted with undertones of pathos, this essay has it all. Tight prose, wicked dialogue, and highlight real comedic timing. Ultimately, Bird is a story about trust, empathy, and the flighty bonds of connection, but also reminds us of the power and necessity of humor to soothe and entertain a weary and skeptical new world with a feathery and hopeful touch. Barbara Scott, Black Diamond. This essay demonstrates how a skillful writer can take a relatively mundane subject, buying a made-to-order burger in a small town, and turn it into a sensory and emotional journey. The writer's use of framing, detail, and narrative voice makes Black Diamond a pleasure to read and guides the reader smoothly to a powerful ending. One juror writes, I could not stop thinking about this essay. Congratulations to Barbara Scott for her essay, Black Diamond. First, my sincere thanks to the Writers Guild of Alberta, not only for this award, but for the wonderful work you do. To my friends and mentors in the writing community, and to my husband, Keith, for your unwavering support through the years, my deepest gratitude. I am truly blessed. Thank you all. The Drama Award was established in honor of Gwen Ferris Ringwood, whose first published play, Still Stands the House, was the most performed one-act play in Canadian theatre. Ringwood was awarded the Governor General's Medal for Outstanding Service in the Development of Canadian Drama. The award is supported by Alberta Views, and we thank them for their support. The three finalists and jury comments are... Ellen Chorley, Everybody Loves Robbie. A bright, funny, tender evocation of youth that honors and celebrates its protagonists. Durers loved its fluidity, its perception of the lives of teenagers, and the enormous joie de vivre contained in the script. It's impossible not to get swept up in this love letter to theater. Matthew McKenzie, Bears. One man barrels through an orchestrated catastrophe in this stylistically notable ode to capitalist short-sightedness. It's a joy to experience the Canadian Rockies through the eyes of Floyd, an indigenous oil worker whose evocative descriptions of the wilderness are as endearing as his implied activism against the Trans Mountain Pipeline. With simplicity and a sharp wit, Matthew McKenzie has created a whimsical and wholly original theatrical experience. Clem Martini, Cantata a deep dive into grief and loss, engagingly told by a master storyteller. Martini honors the small details of an everyday tragedy of losing a parent to dementia without falling into cliche or sentimentality. With exceptional care and vulnerability, 
Clem Martini takes us on the emotional journey of a family navigating health crises in the frustrating absence of much needed supports. In this pandemic year, which has presented a multitude of challenges and losses, Cantata feels particularly poignant. Congratulations to Ellen Chorley and her play, Everybody Loves Robbie. Hello to the Alberta Literary Awards. My name is Ellen Chorley and I am the playwright of Everybody Loves Robbie. I am so honored and tickled to be shortlisted in this category with two playwrights that I absolutely love and respect, Matt and Clem. Congratulations to both of you. I also want to say a huge thank you to the jury for this beautiful award and this wonderful honor. It means so much to me as um, a mid-career emerging playwright. Um, I also want to give a huge thank you to Trevor and Gina at Northern Light Theatre who produced Everybody Loves Robbie in January of 2020. It was a very, very, very cold winter, uh, one of the coldest Edmonton had seen for a long time. So thank you so much to our audience who came to support and see the show. I also want to say a huge thank you to my friends and dear family who have supported me as an artist through, through many, many years and given me nothing but love and support. I hope everyone watching this video and watching these awards are happy and healthy, and I look forward to gathering with you and celebrating in the future. Have a wonderful summer and take care. Bye! The Wilfred Eggleston Award for Nonfiction Book was established in honor of Professor Wilfred Eggleston, who headed the School of Journalism at Carleton University and was awarded the Order of the Empire in 1943. In addition to his career as a journalist, Eggleston published several nonfiction works, including his 1980 memoir, Literary Friends. Before World War II, Eggleston worked as a journalist for the Toronto Star and Time magazine. He wrote 16 books on Canadian history and politics. This award is supported by Vivian Hansen. This year's finalists and jury comments are Timothy Caulfield, Relax, Damn It, A User's Guide to the Age of Anxiety, Penguin Canada. This is an incredibly humorous, science based guide to understanding the routines and decisions that permeate our daily lives. It's not an easy endeavor to make scientific research so accessible to large audiences. But Timothy Caulfield does a thorough and entertaining job of debunking health and wellness fads that add nothing to your life yet drain your wallet. From celebrity pseudoscience to the stigmatization of gluten, this is an essential read in an age of information and sensory overload that influence every aspect of our day. This is a timely, important, and relevant book for all of us. Harnarayan Singh with Michael Hingston, One Game at a Time, McClelland and Stewart. Singh's voice shines through in One Game at a Time, telling a heartfelt, personal, and entertaining underdog story, one that every sports fan is sure to appreciate. Even now, Singh's is a voice we so rarely hear celebrated in both the Canadian sports and literary industries, making One Game at a Time not only an enjoyable read, but an important one. His love of the game is touching and his determination inspiring. However, the true success of this book is its wide-ranging appeal. One need not be a hockey fan to root for Singh. Gina Starblanket and Dallas Hunt. Storying violence, unraveling colonial narratives in the Stanley trial. Arbiter Ring Publishing. Storying Violence deftly examines the colonial history of the Canadian Prairie West and the colonial narrative surrounding the murder of Colton Bushy and subsequent trial of Gerald Stanley. In Storying Violence, the authors hold us accountable to building a safer community for Indigenous youth where they have the same rights as the settlers who occupy their ancestral lands. Parents should be able to let their children go swimming without fear of whether they will ever see them again. They should also be able to rely on and trust our judges, juries, lawyers, and police officers to carry out the law without prejudice and racism. Star Blanket and Hunt bravely outlined the sad but hard truth that settler reasoning is a toxic component of stories shaping Indigenous lives in Canada. 
Congratulations to Timothy Caulfield for his book, Relax, Damn It. Thank you. Thank you for this incredible honor. It is amazing to be part of this really incredible Alberta writing community. Thanks to Penguin Random House for the incredible support. Thank you to my wonderful agent. And of course, thank you to my family for putting up with me. I, I think they wish I would relax, damn it. Um, again, thank you so much. The Alberta Literary Award for Fiction Book was established in honor of novelist George Bounier, who immigrated to Alberta in 1905. He was a botanist, researcher, and writer. Bounier wrote novels, poetry, stories, essays, articles, diaries, and plays. At the age of 100, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from the University of Alberta. The finalists and jury comments in this category are... Katie Bickle Always brave, sometimes kind. Touchwood Editions. This is a beautiful, character-driven exploration of contemporary life in Alberta. Katie Bickle shows her sophisticated skill as a writer by writing convincingly from multiple points of view and in constructing chapters that work as a novel and can be read as standalone stories. The prose itself sings. Always Brave, Sometimes Kind is a gritty love letter to the province as a place to call home. Will Ferguson, The Finder, Simon & Schuster. This exuberant tale of people adrift and objects misplaced leaves us mesmerized. Will Ferguson's world of obsessive anti-heroes nurturing thwarted dreams and meticulously researched exotic locations lingers after the last page. Anne Lapointe, and this is The Cure, Anvil Press. This is a fascinating story that covers murder, cults, riot girl punk, radio scandals, mental illness, and the toxicity of celebrity. At its heart, it is a beautiful exploration of a difficult mother-daughter relationship and protagonist Allison's journey of finding and using her voice. This is a wildly original novel that deserves wide readership and attention. Congratulations to Katie Bickle for her winning book, Always Brave, Sometimes Kind. If you're watching this, it's because my novel, Always Brave, Sometimes Kind, just won the Georges Brunet Fiction Award. In that case, thank you so much to the Alberta Literary Awards, um, including the Writers Guild of Alberta. Thank you to my publisher, Brindle and Glass, a subsidiary of Tetrit Editions, um, and especially the team that helped me bring this novel into the world, Taryn Boyd, Kate Kennedy, and uh, Tori Elliott. Thank you, of course, to my dear friend, Margaret McPherson, who uh, we joke acted as the midwife of this novel. Thank you to my children, Kaylina and Chloe Bickle, and to my husband, Freddie Bickle, for all your support over the many years it took to create this work. The WGA wishes to congratulate the finalists for the 2020 City of Calgary W.O. Mitchell Book Prize. The winner will be announced at the Calgary Awards in mid-June. The Robert Croach City of Edmonton Book Prize was established by Edmonton City Council in 1995 and is administered by the Writers Guild of Alberta. The prize was renamed in 2011 after the late Robert Croach, who is best known for his Governor General's Award winning novel, The Stud Horse Man. Entries are judged by an independent jury recruited by the Writers Guild of Alberta. The winning author will receive a $10,000 cash prize. Audrey's Books is pleased to support this award in cooperation with the Edmonton Arts Council. The three finalists and jury comments are... Tyler Enfield, Like Rum Drunk Angels, Goose Lane Editions. Tyler Enfield beckons to our Albertan roots of cowboy culture through his vivid depictions of a wilder west, through evocative use of surprise and youthful romance, threaded with some magic and stunning landscapes. Like Rum Drunk Angels engages the reader in a fanciful trip at a time when we are all needing to escape. Enfield's use of visually stimulating scene breaks within chapters allows the reader to get away, even if it's just for a coffee break. The story is enchanting and will sweep you away. Beth Sanders, Nest City, Populous Community Planning, Inc. 
Of all the relationships we have in our lives, one that we don't always think about or take time to foster is our relationship with the community in which we live. That relationship is called citizenship. And in her book, Nest City, Beth Sanders redefines the word. By inviting readers to take an active role to reflect on their own behavior, practices, ideas, and contributions, Nest City becomes a personal journey, deepening the relationship between citizen and community. Sanders' writing is informative, yes, enlightening, definitely, but also incredibly accessible and relatable, drawing the reader in as page after page offers insight after insight. With wonderful personal stories woven throughout, Nest City serves as a fascinating study of how cities and their citizens work together to serve each other, how they're responsible for each other, how they grow together, and how, with shared understanding, they, together, can create something extraordinary. Anne Wheeler, taken by the muse, on the path to becoming a filmmaker. New West Press. Ann Wheeler pulls the reader on an extraordinary ride through the author's personal history and the beginnings of filmmaking in 1970s Alberta. Wheeler's experiences as a daughter, a female in a male-dominated profession, a traveler, a storyteller, a performer and listener, behind and in front of the camera, are riveting. Her breadth and depth as a woman with stories to tell, a filmmaker with a purpose, and contributor to culture in Edmonton and beyond is apparent in this open-hearted memoir. The winner of the Robert Croach City of Edmonton Book Prize is Tyler Enfield for his book, Like Rum Drunk Angels. Thank you so much for this award. As an Edmonton writer, it really is a huge honor. Uh, the Edmonton writing community is a very rich, very committed, and very talented group of people. And I'm very inspired to continue being a part of it. Thank you to Goose Lane Editions for publishing Like Rum Drunk Angels, and also to my editor, Bethany Gibson, for all her kind uh, and insightful feedback and support. Thank you very much for watching, and congratulations again to all of the awards finalists. We know that the time will come very soon when we're able to create celebrate, perform, and enjoy literature together in person. Until that day comes, we hope you stay safe and healthy and continue to support writers in Alberta virtually or from a safe distance. Thank you to the WGA staff for their hard work in putting events like this together, especially Executive Director Carol Holmes, as well as Dee Bentley, Bob Mike Gogan, Ellen Kartz, Sadie McGilvery, Mike McGuire, and Jason Lee Norman. Thank you to Real Story Communications for their video wizardry and one more time to our award sponsors and supporters. My name again is Tamir Mohammed. Good night.